Hello there and welcome. Today I'm going to repair this uh, computer and for a change I know what is wrong with it before I start because I'm afraid I messed it up myself maybe 25 or 30 years ago. Basically this computer is a Hong Kong clone of the Sinclair uh, ZX81 or maybe I should say an improvement of the Sinclair because uh, although it's very very similar it does have some changes. Okay if we just take a look at the marketing claims on this box uh, then we can compare it to the Sinclair I hope it's not too glary first one Z80A CPU okay check expandable to 16k or 32k RAM check 42 keys keyboard uh, yes this has a few more keys and also it's uh, some kind of a rubber keyboard which is a lot better than the ZX81 Programmable speaker output. Yes, this is new compared to the ZX81. Direct drive of a thermal printer. Uh, they are of course talking about the Sinclair thermal printer here. Display 24 rows by 32 characters. Yes, identical to the Sinclair ZX81. Display using either home TV or monitor. As we'll see later when I open it up, there is a video out for a black and white monitor. And basically they just put a connector there, because even on the ZX81 there is an internal uh, video output. It's just not routed to a connector. 22 graphic symbols available. Uh, yes, they have some little squares, just like the Sinclair ZX81. It's not true graphics, it's just some of the characters in the character set. Reverse video characters available. Yes, this is uh, actually a minor change on the Sinclair ZX81. Internally there are some video signals that are XOR together. If you just invert one of the inputs to that XOR, uh, you will have reverse video. <clears throat> it's a minor upgrade compared to the Sinclair ZX81. Built-in cassette interface, yes, it has that. And uh, the quality is just as bad as the Sinclair ZX81. Trying to load something in is really difficult. High resolution graphics capability. Again, it's not really high res. It's not pixel by pixel programmable. But what it is, is that some uh, characters in the character set are graphical. Automatic repeat on spacebar, insert, delete and cursor control keys. Uh, yes, it has that. Uh, this is a software upgrade in the ROM. And a programmable slow and fast mode, which is exactly like the Sinclair. Uh, so basically what we see here is that uh, the people in Hong Kong who designed this, they took a standard ZX81 and uh, all the complaints that people had, with the exception of colors, of course, they tried to improve it. So it has all those things that the ZX81 is lacking. It has a better keyboard, it has sound, it has some graphics capability, and it has repeat on the keyboard. So yeah, it should be a really good computer. But by the time it was uh, available in the shops, first of all, it was really too late and too little. Because the Sinclair ZX81 uh, was not selling anymore and Sinclair had moved on to the ZX Spectrum. And finally it was sold in the, the supermarket at a very low cost. So yeah, you know, people saw it as a poor quality machine. Um, but actually if you look at it, it's pretty nice. Uh, the keys are made from slightly harder rubber than uh, the Spectrum. And it, it works pretty decent. There's, easy, there's even a Lambda 83 16K byte RAM pack written in Danish of all things. And uh, it's just as wobbly as the Sinclair uh, RAM pack. And it comes with a little uh, game on cassette from Scanbit Software, which I have never heard of uh, neither before or since. There's a cable for the antenna and there's a AC adapter. So actually, it's quite a nice little machine. And uh, if we look at the back here, it is uh, serial number 5869. So it was, uh, yeah, it must have been a really, really uh, early model. If we look at the back, it looks a little bit like the Sinclair in that it has a DC power supply, uh, an EN mic, and the expansion bus, and the TV out. But on top of that, it has a joystick input and a monitor output. It's quite a nice little design, nice little layout and decent quality. We have a 5 volt regulator, 7805, with a nice little heat sink. Then we have, we have 4 RAM chips, making it a total of 2 uh, kilobyte RAM. 
which is double that of the Sinclair ZX80. Then we have a ROM that I probably should read out and um, have the Z80 CPU and uh, then we have a custom IC. I can't make out the logo, I don't know who made that. And there's a single little TTL gate here for the keyboard. What we need to repair today seems to be a, a missing TV modulator, a different crystal and a, a loudspeaker. And uh, I think that should be it, we should get it up and running. So uh, yeah, let's just uh, get started with that and uh, see how it goes. Okay, so I have uh, cleaned it up around the crystal here and it's supposed to sit here and uh, all the tracks around this area are gone. So uh, I guess that's that's why the bodge wire. Um, but I'm going to fix that up as uh, nicely as I can. So I flipped it over and soldered on the crystal on one point here. And uh, as you can see, the pad is missing on this one. The track actually on the other side of the PCB goes from here to here and from this pin on the crystal to this pad here on this uh, IC. But we can't run the trace on the top side. So I'm just going to put a little insulation on that. And then we're going to bend the wire from the crystal. And uh, I hope that will hold it in place. So the first one goes here. And the other one goes there. And uh, it's not the prettiest thing. But uh, I think that will work. And the plastic is there of course, because there's a track underneath and the silk screen on this board is really poor. Yeah, sorry, I just had to touch up uh, the solder points off camera, I just couldn't see it uh, with the camera in, in the way. That's it for the crystal, and uh, then we have one track that is uh, gone as well on the top side. And that goes from this point here, down to this pad down here, so... Yeah, let's just ohm the speaker first to see if it works. Um, if it doesn't, it would be a waste of time soldering it in. So, uh, yeah, let's see what it says. So it's 8 ohms, so we are just nice here. Uh, no problem at all. So, yep, let's solder in some wires. So that should be it. Uh, let's mount it in the box and uh, try it out. Yep, and I'm back and I got it plugged in. There is something. There's a little cursor at the lower end. If I press an A, it almost looks like an A, but it's like the, the, the lower line on the text should have been at the top of the character. So anyway, let's just continue with the work and see what we can uh, get out of it. Okay, so I'm hand holding again and I hope you can see the monitor. Um, because I found something really interesting. If you remember my Sinclair ZX80 repair, we found that the interrupt pin was not uh, connected properly. And uh, we got double the video frequency. And I found that by just uh, poking around with my oscilloscope probe. And uh, so I thought I would do the same with my uh, Lambda here. And it is possible. There. Just briefly. There again. To just get the correct video output. So it looks like the Z80 has a problem. Or one of the wires to the Z80 is not wired up correctly. So uh, that's good news. It means the RAM and the ROM and the custom chip is all working. So after I've been fingering my Z80, I decided to take out my oscilloscope and I discovered something quite alarming. This is 5 volts, there are 2 volts per division, so 5 volts is up here. If I just turn on channel uh, 2 and the blue line here is at 0 volts. So you can see 0 volts and this is uh, 5 volts, the yellow one here. Uh, however, if I probe pin 21 on the, on the Zilog CPU, I have almost 9 volts there, and uh, surely that is not correct. 
So it's quite amazing that the Zilog uh, CPU is actually running uh, at all with this kind of voltage on the input. So I have to figure out where this uh, over voltage comes from and uh, I think that will solve my problem. So I'll be probing around this, the PCB a little bit and, and see where this uh, signal comes from. Okay, so I thought I'd better uh, just check the voltages without the CPU in it. Mainly to save the CPU, but also because there are some protection diodes on the I.O. on the CPU and uh, they can conduct when the voltage is out of range. So, uh, let's take a look. And yeah. Oops, I'm about to on. So, yeah, let's take a look. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's 6 o'clock and that is correct. That is the... Uh, yeah, that's the brings you back. I'm not sure. And then 5. So... Actually, there is a very high voltage in this system. It's uh, generated down here by a Zener diode, which is 7.5 volts. And it goes to this ASIC. And uh, that is very unusual considering uh, our modern day technology. But uh, looks like it's correct. It should have 7.5 volts just to run the oscillator. So that is quite uh, interesting. But uh, definitely, pin 21 on the CPU should not have something like 10 volts on the input there. Uh, for some reason, on uh, one of the pins down here, there is a logic signal, and it's uh, unfortunately also running at the... Uh, if you look here... Uh, I can't get the probe down. If you look down here, it's running at, uh, at the proper clock rate, but it has 7 volt out, and uh, this goes to the Zilog Z80 CPU. So I guess this is a design fault. Would have been nice with a resistor and a Zener diode to clamp it, I, I guess. I'll probably put in a Zener diode later, but it's running okay. So uh, that is not the main problem with the uh, display and uh, why the text is uh, shifted a couple of uh, lines. Uh, but I found out something else. And to get the proper timing on the display, uh, I have to touch pin... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Pin 27. If I touch pin 27, the display behaves properly. Um, so I guess I just have to look up pin 27 on the Zilog chip uh, to check exactly what that does uh, but if I touch it the display performs properly so um, yeah could be the Z80 chip that is bad uh, or it could be just something that is floating down there and uh, I've been looking at this this pin uh, pin 27 is uh, M1 and uh, it should give a signal out every time the CPU tries to read an instruction and uh, it doesn't there's no signal here it's just noise so the Z80 is bad and um, I'm gonna change it swap it out and uh, then it should be running properly so I'm hand holding again and I'm uh, sorry if there's any shake I've soldered a little Zeno diode here a clamping diode to protect uh, the Zilog CPU uh, from the over voltage from the ASIC and uh, that works fine so I'm ready to switch it on and it should be working now and uh, yeah the first thing that we see is that the cursor is now much bigger and uh, one two three four five and the text is now correct so that's it I have a I have a nice little uh, Lambda 8300 again. So what I thought would be a very easy repair job, just simply switching back the crystal to 6.5 MHz, actually turned out to be quite a long repair. First of all, the crystal, I had to change that back, of course. Secondly, there were some bad PCB traces. This PCB is, is okay quality, but you cannot solder and desolder too many times, and the tracks will come off. So I had a couple of problems with that that I fixed. Then there was a missing loudspeaker and there was a missing oscillator, uh, TV modulator, sorry. Then I had a problem with the Zilog CPU uh, because of over voltage uh, coming out from a badly designed ASIC. But in the end, I got there. That's it for this time. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.